Yo, what's good? This is Lou Phelps. You're listening to Ambiance Podcast. Let's go. All right, so we're going to go live in three, two, one. What up, people? Welcome to Ambiance Podcast. Joining me today, I got Lou Phelps, a what's Canadian good? rapper and producer out of Montreal, Canada. What's good? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm chilling, you know, just uh, out in L.A. doing my thing. Yep. What, sure. what brings you out to L.A.? Um, Just like studio freaking networking and like hanging out you know i just got out of a relationship really a couple months ago okay. so i'm just you know just trying to do my thing you know just get away from the mess and uh yeah man live life clear your head <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah i mean yeah. we talked about a little off air this is like a great place to be for everything you're trying to do in the music industry yeah um yeah so you come out to la pretty often then right um Actually, it's been like a year I haven't been to LA. Like, it's like my first time in a whole year. But um, I used to come out to LA a lot, like every, every like six months or whatever, because I live in Montreal. And right. um, yeah, man, the flights are expensive and shit. So. I'm already knowing the international <laughs> yeah. ships. I'm surprised they let you on it with that coronavirus. Yeah, shit, man. Yo, you know what's crazy, man? I don't want to. I don't want to spook you or whatever. But I feel <laughs> like ever since I got here, maybe it's because it's like placebo effect or whatever. But I don't know, man. I feel like you know, kind of. No, kind of no, oh, I was about to say I'm about <laughs> I'm to disinfect like <laughs> everything. I'm about to throw away the whole no, couch. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. But um, you, I yeah. saw you at the Laker game last night, right? Yeah, I was at the Lakers, uh, Laker Clipper game. Oh man, they must. Uh, are you a, are you a Raptors fan? Since uh, I used to be a Raptors fan, but uh, I st- like I stopped following them the year before they won the championship. Oh, oh. so I was like. I didn't want to jump the bandwagon, so I was like, "I right, fuck it, well, that's what it is." But um, no, nah, that's tight though. It's like it's it's amazing to see like the Raptors win the NBA. Yeah, man, because that's like a whole country thing, right? Like, yeah, man, the whole country was lit after that. Are they gonna hear me from if I? Yeah, you I just pull like you I'm pull like, the like, you pull the mic back. Yeah, you're good right there. Yeah, are they gonna see me though? Yeah, yeah, they'll okay, see you. Okay. They'll see you for sure. All right, yeah. So um, I feel like I got off of the bandwagon before um before they won but it is what it is man i feel like this year i'm a Kawhi guy i really love Kawhi, and i yeah. really love like lebron just like um, i like amazing players because i'm not I, I play fantasy basketball okay that's that's a that's like a hustle dude yeah you gotta, man. You gotta stay on top of it they yeah. play so many games so i'm like more about the players than the actual teams okay. so i don't really have a team right now but i think this year I really think the Lakers are gonna win, man. Yeah, just with everything that's happened with Kobe and like yeah. how LeBron's playing right now, it just looks like it, huh? LeBron is playing like a fucking god right now. Bro. Yeah, he is. And you saw I have him last on my night, team right? too. I'm like, oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> you have a different type of like. Bro, I got a connection with LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna, cause I was gonna say it must have hurt to see a uh, quiet in a Clippers uniform, but I nah. guess you're not. Yeah, you weren't too. He much did of his a job, bro. Fan. When you think about it, he came, he did his job, he left. Straight Facts. Up. You and know? he's from LA too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has to bring one home too. You know what I mean? That yeah, that's yeah. facts. Do you uh you think LeBron is the goat? Number two, solidified, number two. Because I've seen like clips of well, not clips, actual games of Jordan. Like, um, my homie used to buy like uh, like Michael Jordan DVDs and shit where they like the playoffs and shit like that. And um, uh, yeah, man, I saw him play again. Like when i'm older you know i used to watch this when i was like 12 years old and i was like oh well i don't get it but still but now i watch it today and i'm like shit man this guy could ball yeah this guy could fucking ball over like the span of a decade too he just Mm -hmm. like took over the game yeah Yeah, straight up straight up legit you know what's cool though like in like 30 or 40 years um you're gonna be able to look on something back like yesterday and be like yo i saw Kawhi and lebron face off it's like it's like some magic saying. in Jordan or yeah. something. I was so happy yesterday, man. I was like, really? I was like, man, this is like a piece of history that I'm witnessing right now. Yeah, just seeing like Jay Z. Oh, Jay Z was yeah, there. Jay Z was at the was at the game. Fucking John Legend and Chrissy Teigen and shit. Wow. It's like I'm not used to this because I'm I'm from Montreal. There's no teams over there, you know. Yeah, all we have true. is hockey. That like, is true. Nobody really goes to see hockey games except actual fans, you know. There's no celebrities out there. Like. Yeah, no celebrity. Even in Mon- like, there's no celebrities in Montreal. Period. You know. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was like my brother, like Arcade Fire, maybe Celine Dion. Okay. Yeah. That's about. That's it. about it. And those for you guys that are listening, uh, 
Lou's brother is Kaytranada, um, if you guys didn't know. Um, but yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying. I feel like basketball is a big culture thing. Like, it blends music and uh, and sports together, which yeah, is it's like, like something urban. Very. It's urban. like the most. I feel like it's the most urban sport. You can say that ever, definitely. You know, I don't think there there won't be any other. Maybe like football, but even football is like, ah, uh, yeah. You know, it's not the same as like basketball. There's a lot of basketball players that are like get into music, yeah, and vice versa, yeah. Um, wait. So you said LeBron is two. So who's one? Michael Jordan. Okay. All day. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no argument. Undisputed. No, no, nah, nah. No argument. Okay. Straight up Michael Jordan and then LeBron and then. It's it's like it's just open debatable, you know. I think for me it's Kobe, but that's because Kobe's number one. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I'm sorry. Well, I think I I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna like put it out there that like I maybe have a little bit of a bias coming from LA, mm. but I respect your opinion on it because you're not from LA, so your opinion's like unbiased because neither of those players are like yeah your team, you know. I mean, like I understand because it's like I get he was a superhero to LA, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even like even to me, I'm not even from LA. Just like growing up, watching the sport, seeing him do what he what he did, it's like it's crazy and it's it's fucked up to, to you know the way he passed away or whatever. Yeah, it's messed up, man. It is crazy. It's really messed up. It fucked me up for a whole like week. Really? Yeah. Like I was on a roll, like recording shit every day, and then I was at the studio, and then I heard the news, and I was like, I, I don't believe that shit. TMZ That's what I said out, too. I, like, I don't yeah. believe that. And then it was the Grammy day too. Yeah. I remember that it was crazy, bro. I was I live a like a block away from Staples Center. It's like right over mm. there, right? So like when it happened, I I went to Staples Center early live, and everybody was just crying, bawling their yeah, eyes bro. out. I cried, man. Yeah, I cried, bro. I, I'm not gonna lie, I did too. Like, yeah, man. It's it's a crazy thing that happened. R.I.P. to to Kobe, uh, and Gianna, Angie, Angie, and Gianna, and, the other passengers and too. all of the everybody that was in that tragedy involved, and yeah. that's it's a crazy thing, man, about life. But at the same time, it makes you think about like your own immortality and everything, right? And yeah, to be grateful for everything. Yeah, he did his job, man. You know, he's he's like he did what he had to do. You know. Yeah, I remember seeing like uh, Tracy McGrady saying like uh, like talking about how um, he wanted to die young. So I guess he he got that. Who Kobe. wanted to die young? Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's what that's what Tracy McGrady said. Damn. Yeah. So I guess he got what he wanted, but at the same time, it's, it's it, messed up. Yeah. Know? It's still tragic because he left behind like a big yeah. thing, which is the, the tough part about yeah. it. Um, but digressing a little bit, I want to I wanna get into a little bit more about you because you come from such a musical family. Um, how did that start? Like, what was childhood like for you um, growing up in... Did you grow up in Montreal or St. Saint, 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 Saint Hubert? St. Hubert? Yeah. Okay. So growing up in St. Hubert, basically my dad was a taxi driver. My mom was a caretaker. Um, and is that what it is? I don't know how to say it in English because I'm like a caretaker. By like, the way, I'm I'm f- um, francophone first, so I don't necessarily know all the words that really. Yeah, yeah. That's really I, interesting. I, like I do know the words, like a, a bunch of words. Like I'm fluent in English, but I'm like some words I'll, I can't keep up or whatever. Wait, so you said you're francophone first? Mm-hmm. I don't, honestly don't know what that is. I'm not gonna lie to you. What is that? It's like Anglophone, Francophone. Okay. Anglo, speak English. Franco, you f- speak French. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, basically, I speak French first, and then if I don't know the words that I'm using, it might take a while. To, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> it might take a while for me to get on it, but um, so yeah. All this to say that my mom was a caretaker and my dad was a taxi driver. And then just growing up, every single day, my dad would blast some like um, compa music, which is the native music of my country where I'm or like my roots, basically. Would, um, you, would he pick you up from school? And yeah, shit? Okay. he would pick me up from school and play some like Ella Fitzgerald, some Louis Armstrong, some basically jazz legends and that's part of like what we how we do our things you know like the the sound that we're looking for when it comes to music and then um yeah so my dad would blast 
just like dope music but we wouldn't know at the time because all we want to hear is like what's hot in the streets and shit so uh what was hot in the streets back then for you um at that time it was like jay-z nelly uh like clips Okay, like, yeah, 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 shit like that. And then at some point, um, 50 Cent was really hot. And that's when I started rapping because 50 Cent was super hot. And I was like, yo. Because of 50? Yeah, man. No, 50 definitely. Months. Yeah, man. I tell you, bro. That was the first album I ever bought. I think about the Massacre. Massacre was the first album I ever had. Mm. What, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 25. Me too. Okay, so that makes sense. We yeah. Similar. The first I album know. I ever bought was In My Mind by Pharrell. Okay. Yeah, with my own money, I was like, I gotta go buy something. I, I didn't have enough to buy a video game, so I was like, I might as well go buy an album. How how old are you in? Uh, eleven. Eleven, maybe. Okay, so a lot of people didn't. Uh, I feel like fuck with Pharrell at that young of an age. Yeah, nah, nobody fucked with any music that I listened to at the time, especially in your city. Or yeah, not nah, especially in my city, bro, because it was like basically white people but Mm -hmm. like no like literally no flavor at all like just like they listen to like they don't they don't do any research to find new things so they basically take whatever the media gives them so uh, okay whatever was hot in on like mtv or like you know shit like that just mainstream yeah mainstream shit pretty much but um I feel like me and my me and my bro, my sisters, we all tried to like step out of the box when it came to that. You know, we always tried to find um, different type of music. You know, different like artists and shit like that. What do you think that stemmed from? I really don't know, man. I really don't know. I feel like maybe the maybe the tapes back like my 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 sisters used to like record tapes of. Um, like old hip hop videos and that's what we would watch all the time like um dance hall videos guys freestyling in like rap city bt okay. and shit and like um 112 and diddy and shit like that you know just like a bunch of stuff but um yeah i think that basically made us think of okay well what's what's hot in the streets like in new york or what's hot okay. in LA or you know instead of being like oh what's hot in Montreal or you know so um, yeah you 50 think Cent maybe start rapping that exposed you to like <laughs> yeah so many other different sounds of hip hop then huh? I was like I have to start I have to start rapping and we would go on 50 Cent's website and then they would have the instrumental play like the in the club instrumental run and loop you know yeah and me and K would like go on um the windows recorder thing and then grab the the like webcam recorder you know it has a little mic in there yeah record our shit you know off the off the speaker not even off of the you know off the speaker we blast the speaker we rap on top of the beat down and it's one file you know yeah and that's what it was like the first track we did was like over some some 50 cent beat and it's like not even real words just like mumbling and like gibberish and shit like that just to get the flow just to get into it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, how we started making, well, how I started making music. And then K got on, K was like, I gotta make my own beats. All right, sure. So, um, back in the days, in the Windows era. The Windows era. Yeah, I feel like there was a Windows era and (laughs) an Apple era. Definitely. Yeah, but the Windows era, there was like this this jazz um, sample. Well, jazz, like, song as a template just if you want to listen to music and shit mm-hmm. so k sampled that and chopped the beat with the with a with a virtual dj i don't know if you know this this like software it's no, like basically i know i know virtual dj yeah yeah so basically he took virtual dj put cues on the track oh, and then damn. chopped the beat like that and then added drum a drum loop to it and that's his first beat that he ever made wow and then um he was on he was like I I gotta get on FL. I gotta get on FL studio. FL studio. And then we downloaded the the demo, we tried, we tried, we didn't know how it worked. And I was like, yo, let me 
let me let me see what's up you know because i was i wasn't really on that i was just like yeah. on my rapping shit but. How, how do you and how do you do your research back then because i feel like now if if you want to learn so it's just as easy as it YouTube wasn't even research bro it was trial and error just trial and yeah, error. yeah bro it was trial and error wow so we just i, I was just trying shit and I, i'm like okay well you have to do the pattern and then you 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 know layer the beats you know layer what you want to what you want to hear and then kate was like oh that's super simple you know let's, let me try to do something and he found a cracked version on uh, Pirate Bay or some shit like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, from there it's history, man. Pretty much. Yeah. That's crazy. So it seems like you and, and your siblings kind of bonded over, over music. like, discovering music together then, huh? Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Well, my sisters, not really with me. Maybe with Kay, but... Because I wasn't on that R&B shit. And they were, like, obviously, like, girls or whatever. Yeah. They, they want to hear that soft shit. But I'm, like... You're on that hard uh, yeah, 50 Cent. You're 50 over there. 50 Cent, bro. With a do-rag yeah, on. Yeah, like. straight up. Straight up. I had a do-rag on. Okay. I had everything, bro. I wanted to be like him. Straight up. But, yeah, man. That's how it started, man, pretty much. Did you um, start getting into music producing or rapping first? Rapping first, for sure. Okay. Rapping first. I just started producing, like... Oh, really? three years ago okay but i never put anything out you know like the next album is basically where everything's gonna you know shine and shit but um yeah i never really put anything out do you, do you have any um of your own production on your uh, in your al next album that's gonna come out yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, got a, I got a i got a couple i got like three or four tracks produced by by me and then the rest is like by k and tech okay tech Lun. and um yeah man it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a good reveal. I got a bunch of shit like people have been asking to, you know, it's like, yo, you gotta drop that, you gotta drop that. I was yeah, I was actually gonna ask you this a little bit later, but we can just get into it like mm. 'cause you your most recent drop was uh Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Yeah, Cinnamon Toast. Not crunch, my <laughs> No, no. Well we say crunch at the Yeah, yeah, you do say track. crunch <laughs> on the song. So that was your most recent yeah. uh track. So yeah. uh I'm sure people have been like, like you said, asking like crazy, like when yeah, the new man. Album, you know? They're like, yo, when's the new album? Like, um, some some like German label hit me up to drop a a, a project, but like my beats only. And I tried to, I tried to give them the beats, but they didn't like the beats. So I was like, oh. okay, that's weird. But um, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, a German label wanted me to 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 drop an album. Um, I'm like working on the album every day. I'm like. There's some a big, big, big collab coming. Like, oh, really? Yeah, the next single is gonna be crazy. That's dope. Yeah, I'm in the studio, man. Just you know, just working on the album. I I wanna I wanna make a movie with the album. You know what I mean? Like on some like Solange shit. You know? Okay. I don't know if you've seen the 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 film that she made with her album. The mm -mm. man, you gotta watch it. I'll check it out. Is it like titled something or just look? I up think it's when I when I get home or when I come home. When I come home. Like okay. But um, yeah, you'll find it on YouTube. It's Definitely. like f fifty minutes, maybe or forty minutes. Okay. It's basically the album, but like visuals attached to it. So. But like, I want to make an actual movie, and like the soundtrack is basically my album. You oh. Know what I mean? And, and then, it's like an actual story, and you know. So that's yeah. crazy. So like it would be like, uh, all the tracks are basically playing through the entire album, yeah. and it's just like basically one long ass music video. Yeah. Yeah. I like much. that idea. Yeah. I feel like. With artists, we need to to find a way to stand out, you know. Especially my music is not like popular or whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like the typical radio type stuff. So I'm I just gotta find a way to get my fans like, give my fans a treat, you know. Yeah. So I guess a movie might be the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. I like the idea. Yeah. I feel like um, just from listening to your music, I feel like. You do like a you have a uni unique way of blending like hip hop with like dance music, mm. so it's still like I feel like it's something that if somebody necessarily wasn't a fan of hip hop, they can still yeah. kind of relate to it because it's like oh this is kind of catchy. Like I feel like Pharrell did that too, you know, when he started yeah. making shit like Happy and stuff, and it's like people that necessarily aren't like hip hop heads can still still root to it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, basically bridging the gap. You know, but I, I feel like I'm I'm kind of done with that era of myself because I was trying to do t too much. I was mm -hmm. trying to like. Were you finding yourself kind of? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that that was what. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I'm like, I wasn't I wasn't sure of the album when I dropped it. The, the 
um, 002. Mm-hmm. That was your sophomore, right? Yeah. But I wasn't, I don't know, man. It wasn't it. Like, I listen to it now and I'm not, it's not that I'm not proud of it, but I'm like, I could have done better, you know? Mm. And just like listening to what I'm doing right now, I'm like, I'm glad that it's part of the process, but at the same time, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like mixed, mixed emotions, you know? I feel like, I feel like that's, that's good that you think that way and yeah. then you're not content like with your last album because yeah. if you were then your next piece would, wouldn't be anything to yeah it, right? it would be trash man. would be trash <laughs> yeah. i i know I'm, I'm similar bro like uh some of my like previous podcasts like when i first started i listened back to them and i'm like the fuck like what was i saying like i'm over here clowning myself while i'm listening to it like just nitpicking yeah, everything i do but i feel like it's 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 important to uh, to like grow and like understand where you fucked up and understand what like why you messed up and you know mm-hmm. for the longest i didn't know why i was messing up but i still was doing it you know what i mean yeah and now i do understand why i messed up and i'm like all right let me go back to my roots because okay. the best music i ever well it wasn't the best but i feel like the best like feeling that i ever felt when i put out music was in the beginning you know when it was just for fun yeah and i lost that you know you lost I mean? that along yeah, the way. i lost that the, the fun of it so now that you've acquired these like skills and this knowledge about the industry you want to go back to when you to, yeah to when you first started so exactly you, okay. man like the the raw beats the freaking you know just like the the hard shit you know just like me spitting over some dope ass k beats you know that nobody wants to touch because everybody's scared of touching him you know what i mean yeah like that's what i want to do i don't want to i don't want to like rap to to be on a radio you know, mm. you know what I'm thinking, man. What? You know how like Erica Badu is like everybody knows her. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows her. Yeah. But does everybody listen to her music? No. Okay. You get what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I want to be to the point where if you're asking for goals or whatever, I want to be to a point where a lot of people know me, but not everybody listens to me. Like, if I step in a room, they know who I am. But you don't necessarily need to listen to my music to know who I am. So, essentially, your reputation precedes you, or I don't know if that's how you say it, but it's like you know Shade, right? Yeah. You listen to Shade. Sometimes. Nah. Sometimes. Sometimes. That's how I want to be. You okay. Know what I mean, legendary status, but only the real, real fans listen to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the type of that's the type of energy I want to bring. Like. Same with D'Angelo or like Jay Dilla or, you know, mm-hmm. you heard these names everywhere, but you don't know, you don't want to do the research because you're not really into that music. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't care if you don't listen to my music as long as you know who I am and you know that I'm, I do good shit. You know okay. what I mean? That's, that's my energy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are some big goals. You want to be like, yeah. that's that is hell yeah. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a, it's a process. It's going to take time, but you know. I'm with it. You're up for the journey, right? Yeah, 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 I'm with it. When did you first decide? Because I know you said how you first kind of started getting into music. When did you decide that, yo, I want to do this for the rest of my life, or I want to do this for a living? At what point was that? Um, I think I was like 18, 19, something like that. I was just doing music for fun at the age of like... So I started at the age of 12, right? Okay. At 12, I started, and then... From 12 to, like, 16, I was, like, having fun with it or whatever. And then Mm -hmm. at 16, I dropped my first project with K. That was, like, 2011, 12? 2010, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Something like that. Anyways, all this to say that when I, I dropped that, I got some attention on me. And, like, people wanted to, like have me around and like do shows or whatever i was like ah whatever i'm still going to school at that point and then k blew up like on some whole other shit he dropped the the if remix the teacher moses and all that he went to europe and all that and then he was going through a depression mm-hmm. and my mom told me like yo you should go help k like quit school and go help k wow so i'm like oh, okay well you know might as well that's crazy i've never heard somebody's mom yeah. tell them to quit school yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But it's for you. It's for a family. Yeah, it was like a. It was like it was supposed to be like just like a break, you know, just like a small break from school or whatever. And then me watching K doing what he does, I was like, I could do it too, you know. Like, yeah, you know, it's possible. I might as well just try, you know, give it a couple of years. 
if at the age of like 30 it doesn't work out just fucking go back to school and fucking finish my diploma it's always there yeah Yeah. so i'm like all right well um yeah i was like 19 19 i remember quitting my day job i was like all right well you guys don't want to give me my uh my breaks or whatever well my my weeks off because Kay would go like to Australia or like go to uh, fucking Europe. Oh, so like, you'd ask for time off at the tours? Yeah, yeah. I, I I would ask like, yo, can you can I please get like one week off? And it's like a supermarket, bro. I'm working at oh, a supermarket at the time, okay. so it's like you got you got a bunch of people that want to work. Yeah, they want your shift. My, yeah, they want my shift. So like, just give it to them. When I come back, just hook me up. You know, just mm-hmm. hook it back up. And then nah, they didn't want to hook me up, so I'm like, alright, fuck y'all. I'm gonna go <laughs> do my thing, and uh, I'll see you in uh, I don't know how many years, but you know. I'll be good by then. And then, yeah, man, the rest is history. You know, I'm just doing my thing right now. Yeah, yeah. So, like, around, like, the time you quit that job and you started going on tours is when you decided, like, I want to I wanna take this more seriously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But even then, you know, I wasn't even taking that shit seriously. I was just, like, just doing it for fun, kind of. Right, so that's... But it the- wasn't really for fun. You know what I mean? It was just, like, I was lazy. I was just being lazy. I was just doing it for, like, you know, once every... Once every month, I would go to the studio and then do a track, you know? Yeah. So it would take, like, a whole year to make a, a mixtape. But it's, like, when you prepare a mixtape now, well, in the mind state that I'm now, I need at least 100 tracks to make sure that my shit is, like, every single track that I put out is fire. You know what I mean? What do you mean, like, 100? 100, 100 I got to record at least 100 demos. Oh, shit. At, at least 100 tracks. You know what I mean? Damn. So, so yeah, man. Um it was just like mediocre music. It was like it's cool, but it's it's not there yet, you know. Okay. But now I'm on I'm on my you know my serious shit, taking my shit serious, going to the studio every single day, just like working, bro. Just yeah. Working hard. Yeah. And that that was gonna actually lead me lead me to my next question. Uh, so the first tape you dropped was called the Experiment, right? Yeah. Well, the first first tape I dropped was with the Celestics, and it's like a group that me and K K made, and um, okay, it's called it was called Massively Massive. What what is that name, Celestis? Or Celestis? Celestics is Celestics. basically Celestins. Uh, Celest, yeah, Celestins. So my last name is Celestin. Okay. My actual last name is Celestin, but um, your government name is Celestin. Yeah, yeah got you. Well, last name. Last name. Yeah, right. And then I just made a ninety degree with the C at the end. Celestics. That's pretty hard. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> yeah. You know? But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and that that had a little buzz. Like a couple people knew our shit, and you know it was kind of fun. But K was like, "Nah, bro, I, you gotta grow by yourself. You gotta understand how this shit works, cause it's not, you know, it's not gonna be easy." And then we we dis disbanded, and then K did his thing. I did my thing. Mm-hmm. It took me like four years to get back into rapping seriously. And then experiments, my first solo EP. Right, you released that on SoundCloud, right? Yeah, that shit was. Uh, was buzz- it SoundCloud? Yeah, SoundCloud or Bandcamp or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. that shit was buzzing on SoundCloud. Right? Yeah, yeah, really. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, damn. Has some had, has a lot of streams. You know what's crazy, bro? I never go on like like all the social media and shit. Are you gonna hear that? Yeah, hey, if bro, this motherfucker going off. Yeah, if you guys are listening to this right now, some dude going crazy outside. <laughs> it's like Tokyo Drift out there. But I yeah. get on social media, but like I never really get on it you know what i mean like mm. i i post my stuff or whatever but i'm never actually on it so if ever i post like a song on in on um soundcloud or like whatever bandcamp i'd never check the streams i never check the likes i never check the comments i don't care you know i'm just like yeah. right, it's out so mm. i'm just glad that it's out that's good so I, I i wouldn't know if if it actually did good but i know it did good because i i got nominated for a juno for that um um, project so, wow yeah but Juno's like a Canadian Grammy wow really yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. I'm like I did good for that one but um, yeah that's interesting that you don't really like check up on uh, the numbers on things because I feel like in this generation uh, it's like a societal thing people are so concerned about their streams their likes you know everything like that so I think that's uh, that's commendable you know that you you don't really yeah but if you look at it if if you look at it the way that I do is like I don't, um, I feel like if you pay attention to like the streams and all that, you might get discouraged. You might get like, 
down on your own stuff you know what i mean and it's not the right criticism okay you get what i mean yeah yeah so it's like if you look at your if you if you do good music and you know you do good music and then you're like why don't i why don't i have streams i need streams and shit like you know you don't need streams you're like if you feel like you're comfortable and you're doing the right thing just do the right thing and that's it you don't need to fucking take care of whatever's happening like i'm, I'm on spotify i never check my streams never that's never. good I, I checked it like for the year the, the year wrap-up or whatever every year they have a wrap-up yeah at like the end of the year or whatever and then i check the year wrap-up and then i have like eight million streams or whatever i'm like oh that's pretty good you know yeah. i didn't know I, you know what i'm saying I, I wasn't i wasn't expecting that and that's the best thing like when you don't expect shit you get and you get good results you're like oh well i'm doing good you know that's true but if you're like focused on the streams and you're focused on all of that and you want to make sure that shit goes well sometimes you get disappointed and that's what basically happened to me and i got into a depression because of that you okay know? So yeah. you don't let the outside sources influence like how you're gonna make Never, music, bro. and that has a huge effect on people a lot. Like mm -hmm. you said, yeah, the streaming numbers and all that. Yeah, I never do that, man. It's like it fucked me up once. I I tried to like please the crowd, like that, and it's not even my crowd. You know what I mean? I felt like it was my crowd at some point, but then I was like, ah, oh, well, you know, I did this uh, this track called Rent Rent Is Due, and I paid like a uh, key. You know, key. Key. Like with ASAP, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I paid Key to to be on the track, and it was like the weakest verse he could ever give anybody. Damn, weak ass verse, bro. And it's not like to diss him, but he's like, hey, this is a lick, you know. Yeah, this is easy, basically. like you know. This guy's paying me a thousand bucks to fucking just to fucking. I don't even know if it was a thousand bucks. I think it was more, but he's paying he's paying me this much to do whatever I want. All right, fuck it. And he did the weakest verse. And then I put the track out. I don't even know how much streams it has or views or whatever, but I'm not I'm not proud of it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Just because I wanted to feed them the what I what I thought was my fans, you know. Yeah. Some fans like it. Some fans don't. You know. They'll just it's see like, the name and be like, "Oh, yeah." But it's it's you know this rap shit is complicated, bro. Yeah. It's like way too complicated, bro. I'm sure you've learned a lot, like just within the the past five or six years you started taking it more serious yeah, on. Man. and that no I, I agree with what you said earlier too you know if you really think about it if you're worried about like streaming numbers like that it's kind of like you're seeking validation from a bunch of people that you don't even know exactly exactly that's exactly how I feel mm -hmm. you know if you want advice go talk to the right people you know go talk to the, the, the musicians around you and like if you want actual advice on music or yeah. whatever you're doing like if you whatever type of art you do just like go see someone that's good at that art and then he'll tell you if it's good or not yeah and you and you value that person's feedback way more than yeah exactly it's like what does a a little kid from like 12 year old kid know about fucking 808s and you know shit like yeah. that some people know some kids know but most of them don't you know what i yeah. mean like, oh i don't like the way that the track is mixed or whatever, you know, like some shit like that. Nah, man, like you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So why would I even care about what you, what you have to say? Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. exactly how it is too. Uh, going back to the experiment, um, was that was the title of that project kind of like encompassing of like what it means? It was it just like an experiment of like, yeah. doing songs? I was like, I was in the studio, basically my homie's basement at his mom's house and then we just started recording stuff and recording stuff and recording stuff and then I was like this doesn't sound like a f cohesive project so I'm just gonna call it experiments because I was trying shit yeah you know and that's how it came out yeah pretty much pretty much just like an experiment of songs yeah yeah, yeah. like the sure. first track is something I never did the tell me track is something I never did I don't know like most of the tracks on, on there don't even make sense. You know what I mean? So it was just like an experiment, just me trying shit, you know, testing stuff. I got you. Okay. Yeah. How do you how do you think you've grown since then as like an artist from that point to like where you're at now? Um, I got more confident with my stuff. Like I listen to my shit now and I'm like, like yeah, this is this is really tight. When back then I used to be on some like. Uh, I don't know. It, it's like it's okay. All right, it's good enough. Let's put it out. You know. Yeah. 
But now I'm like, nah, this has to be the, the most fire shit every time, you know? Yeah. This has to be the best shit I ever put out. That's how I look at it every time, though. You're but, more uh, serious about this shit now then? Yeah, yeah. It's like the energy the energy that I bring in tracks now are, are completely different. And, like, I try to sing more. I try to, like, be more melodic. Yeah, man. I'll show you some stuff later. If yeah, you yeah, want, yeah. But, Definitely. Uh, I, I would love to hear it. Um, yeah. Where do you get some of your inspirations from when you're, uh, when you're making your music? So I got this playlist on, um, on uh, my Apple Music. And basically, I go on my brother's account, and I shuffle all the songs, and I listen to every song that comes in the shuffle, because he has, like, 30,000 songs on there. Damn. And then whether it's, like, some old-school uh, disco shit or some new school gritty hip hop shit or some Nas or Curtis Blow anything you know what I mean like anything I put it in the in the playlist and I basically when I'm when I'm out of ideas I just listen to that playlist and I'm like okay well I could probably do something like this you know I could probably do something like that or whatever and that's where my inspiration comes from so it's basically what Kay listens to and yeah so you're basically like taking like little pieces of everything and trying to blend it into your own sound kind of kind of kind of yeah yeah so you're super you're super experimental with your shit then huh? yeah 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 i mean nobody wants to hear the same shit all the time you know when it comes to when it comes to like music nobody wants to hear like oh this guy sounds like juice world or this guy yeah. sounds like fucking um nba young boy or, i don't know man that's yeah. how i feel like Nobody wants to listen to somebody that sounds like you. So I'm just want to switch it up all the every time. Or every if time they the do, chance. like it doesn't last very long. Exactly. Like how many like sound alike rappers like kind of fizzle out, you know, like yeah. designer. Where is it? Yeah, design. Song. Oh my god. Designer. Everybody thought what he happened sounded to like designer? future, right? It's sad, man. It's like that's how it, that's how it is though. But <laughs> I feel like it's the end of a trap. Like the trap era is kind of di- dying low key. It is. It, you know the 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 grime beats are like taking over like pop smoke and like mm-hmm. five new foreign and shit like that that's what's this was popping right now yeah and it's like you know it's a slow slow transition but i'm like in a lane where like nobody can actually say well this is like played out or whatever you know yeah. what i mean like my shit is like it is what like it you, can, you can't name another rapper like me probably like two or like like gold link or you know yeah i think else, i know? think a little bit of your flow kind of sounded like Smino in the uh, what's it called in Cinnamon Cinnamon Toast Cinnamon Toast yeah. the flow it sounded like it Yeah, but I think that I love but that but you know what I mean it's like all the like if you think about Revenge of the Dreamers and all that mm-hmm. all of the rappers in there all have their own style yeah and it's like you can't really put them in the lane and that's what I love about the, the Dreamers album and the that that new energy like the, yeah it feels like a whole new a whole new like breath of fresh air. I don't know. No, I feel you. I was uh one of the podcasts I had previous was with this dude Cam Obi. You know Cam Obi? Yeah, 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 yeah. Producer yeah. um out of Vegas, and he was. I talked to him about that. I was just like, what was the creation process uh during that whole whole ordeal when you guys were like making yeah. that album? And he was just like, he just threw us all in like the studio yeah. and was just like, no direction, just like make something and then. That's tight, man. Yeah. Nobody that's, does you that. See, yeah, that's the type of shit that makes great albums, you mm-hmm. know? And it got nomina- nominated for an al- uh, rap album of the year, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you have some sort of recognition, it's because people know you make good music. So you shouldn't do what other people want you to do. You should do whatever yeah. you want to do because you got there by yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just my way of seeing things. But yeah, so cinnamon, cinnamon toast. Yeah, is that your favorite cereal? You know what's funny? I never even tried cinnamon toast. Are you serious? Ever in my life. Yeah. What? I think the, the only time I tried it was at the video shoot, and I didn't really get to taste it because I had to grab a whole fucking handful and then shove it in my mouth. Oh okay. But it wasn't really like savory or whatever. It's just like you know, just shove it in your mouth and throw it out. You know. You weren't like enjoying or like. Tasting nah, it like I wish I tasted it actually, but I never tried cinnamon toast. No, I never tried it. My favorite cereal is actually um, um, Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, Honey Nut Cheerios. 
Okay. Or like, you know, Frosted Flakes. Frosted you know, the simple shit. The know? simple shit. Yeah, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, I don't know about the, cause you guys got a bunch of like, like Americans got a bunch of fucking cereal. Right? Yeah, there's so oh. many choices. I Too fucking many. I love cereal. Apple I'm Jacks like, and all that type of shit, man. Yeah. Yo, I'm all for it. <laughs> I love cereal. I wish, I wish we had these in Montreal. You, you don't have them? Out nah, there? man. I feel like it's way too much sugar. So, the like the Canadian government is like really like strict on on like fatty foods and, and you know like oh. we don't have we don't have pop. Well, I like Montreal doesn't have Popeyes. Um, we don't have like a you know a bunch of shit that you guys have. We don't have just because yeah. it's like regulations and like the Canadian like fucking. The FDA, FDA of, of Canada, Canada pretty much okay. is is like very strict with shit. So like we don't have much of what you guys have, but okay. the stuff that we do have is very tasty. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so when people when people out here were going crazy about Popeyes, you guys are over there were like, what yeah, the fuck we, you guys like when is it coming? About? When is it coming, bro? <laughs> nah, man. Like in Montreal, nobody fucking like we have to drive to like two hours away to Ottawa to get to a Popeyes. You know? Really? I mean? Yeah. But nobody really does that. Yeah, They're just like oh fuck it, you know. And even and even then, the the new chicken sandwich that you guys are talking about, we don't even have it in Canada. Oh, they don't even serve yeah, it. Yeah, no, nah. we don't have it, bro. It's I not. I gotta try it. I gotta try it. You have. Now that I'm here, I have to try it. You have to before you leave. Is it that good? Uh, I had it one time. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty good. Um, mm. but I don't think it was worth the hype. But mm. it was good. I w- I wouldn't say it's like. Popeyes is my favorite um, fast food. Really, your yeah. favorite fast food is like a must-have when you come down here, or what? If I don't have anything to eat, I'm gonna eat some Popeyes. You know what I mean? Because like, you were I'm saying not... you like to eat healthy, right? For the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. Like I recently got back into like into my you know bodybuilding self, I guess. Bodybuilding I, self. Because I used to like be very like you know. I tried to get very beef at some point, like very like swole or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I stopped the gym because I was depressed, and then yeah, um, I just got back to it now. I was I had a gut, no, like I was like really, you know, I still have it. I still have a little a little some, right? But um, yeah, man, I was fucked up at some point. But then I was like, all right, let me fucking switch it up, start eating healthy, start going to the gym, all that, get into a routine, and then. Now I'm good. I'm like, you know, doing my thing. That's such an important part too, huh? Getting out of your own head. Yeah, man. Working out and eating, eating good. Yeah, man. You know what's crazy, man? Don't you feel like nowadays so many people feel depressed and so many people are aware that they're depressed or aware that they're like mental issues and all that, like anxiety and shit like that? You yeah. Know what I mean? It's so crazy. That people are Social aware media, of Social media, bro. Yeah, it's now more than ever too. Like, I feel saying. like... Maybe because we're the same age, right? Like when mm-hmm. I was growing up, and we, there wasn't this shit to worry about. Yeah. Like life was just like glowing. It was like you had, to, you had to go to your mama's house, call on the phone, and all that. Like you had to remember the numbers and all that. Now yeah. People just fucking DM or fucking text or whatever. Yeah, and you and can't. It's like e- people that don't get. You know what's crazy? At some point, I wouldn't get text. Like I wouldn't get texted or some shit like that for like a day or two, and I would like freak out just because I wouldn't get texted. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what depression does to you. you yeah. Know? Like, your phone fucks you up, at some point. Anyways, yeah. It's just uh, no. I no. We get, <laughs> we're we're like, in this weird era of like people don't understand necessarily the power of this shit. But like I feel like in fifty plus years when this shit gets even worse, like people yeah. are gonna look back at this time like it's gonna be like history books, you know? Like. But I feel like at some point, at some point, it might like die down. You know. You think so? I think. I think so. They might switch up to another thing. Maybe. To some other form of yeah, communication. Yeah. Are we really gonna stay on our phones? You know, like, are we not gonna evolve? You know what I it mean? Might, it might. It might be like, like that, bro. I'm scared of it. Twenty years <laughs> ago, would would you freaking get a call, Facetime? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Even like a cell phone didn't exist like twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. And now it's and, yeah. so much, so powerful. Now kids fucking have it. You know? Yeah. Like. My my like a, a little cousin or whatever would ask for an iPhone X or some shit. You know, like, what the fuck are you doing with an iPhone X? I fucking, you don't need that. Fucking ten years old, you know? Yeah. I don't know, man. If you had a kid, would you? What would you? Would you not let him have a phone until? Honestly, man, the way I would look at it is, I would see what the other parents are doing, because I don't want to. I want my feel to. I want my kid to feel like an outcast, you know? Because I've I've been an outcast in some type of way, like 
just being black in a white neighborhood is like yeah. you know mm-hmm. you're already an outcast so imagine if i still live in the same neighborhood and my kid grows up and he wants the I- uh, iphone because every kid has it you know i might as well just give it to him and all right this is your gift for the year just for, don't ask for shit don't ask you know <laughs> again you know some shit like that but yeah i don't know man it's, it's complicated man like when I when I get a kid, I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know yeah. what I'm gonna do, but you got some time, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> before that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just hope no baby mamas. You know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah. I don't know baby mamas or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Be safe. Um. Yeah. No, nah, I I agree. Like this whole the whole like influence that it has over people is insane. Like it used to be so cool to to be away from like some of your homies or some of your childhood friends, and then when you see them next you just have like so much shit to talk about but now like with this constant communication through the phone it's like like when you meet up back with a person it's like you already yeah. see what they're doing on social media it's like yeah, you don't have yeah, much yeah. to talk about anymore yeah but me and the homies don't don't really text like that or we don't really uh you know we don't we don't talk like that okay you just like talk in person that's how, that's how it is man i'm just like i'm not too much of a cell phone person honestly okay uh, you know when i need it i need it but like I'm not always on it, you know. But you're conscious of of how it's affecting everybody else. Though. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Okay. Like I, yeah, I used to have a girlfriend. She was like crazy off of that shit. Like she was always on her phone, always like looking, like, oh, how do I look? Do I look good? Like, and it, and it makes people insecure. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you see all these like models and all these like, you don't even have to be known to like look like a model. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just post pictures and you like. Let's say like ambitious girls like want to want to be Instagram models, and then your your girlfriend sees that and like they see what you like and they see what you you know, yeah, and it fucks them up, bro. It fucks them up, you know. Like mm-hmm. society is fucked up, bro. It's like girls look at girls look at what you like, and then they think you're not satisfied with what you have. So they try to become that. Yeah, but you you didn't like you didn't like that necessarily on her. Yeah, you liked her for her. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 man. It's messed up, man. Like life is fucked up, bro. Like it is nowadays. It's messed Times up. Times are crazy right yeah, now, bro. Yeah, it's wild. What a going back to the music. Yeah, what are some artists that you're feeling right now? Uh, I love Baby Keem. Baby Keem goes crazy. Um, who else do I like? Playboy Cardi. Mm. I love Childish Gambino. I love. I like Frank Ocean. I, I don't know. Yeah, I like him. He's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Ocean's really dope. Yeah. Yeah. I like Shoreline Mafia. I like That's a Bay Area. Usually. Yeah, I like okay. I like Drago and Benno. I don't know if I I don't know if I said it right, but you know them? Drago and Drago and Benno? Mm-mm. It's like some guys from uh Michigan. It's like okay. the Michigan like drill shit, you know. Okay. I like I like gangster shit. You know, I, I love listening to gangster shit, you know. I can tell. Freddie Gibbs, I love Freddie Gibbs. I love Mad Lib. I love, Hell yeah. I love all that shit, man. All the all the good stuff, man. So you did you like Pop Smoke too? Oh man, I like I loved him, man. Yeah, I loved him. His energy on the tracks, bro. Yeah, he he kind of he kind of sounded a little bit like Fifty too, like. I don't know, man. I feel like he sounded like, he sounded like himself. You know what I mean? No, yeah. He's like on some like on on a whole other wave. Like, yeah, nobody did that. You know, yeah, it's it. That's what's that's what's fascinating about him, and like people are trying to follow what he's doing, like Fabio Foreign is kind of like doing the same thing. I, I, I forgot the uh, the other guy's name. There's another guy's name. Dropped a, a track called the uh, Suburban. Anyways, mm-hmm. but it's like all drill shit, you know. But nobody has Pop Smoke's voice because his voice is so like deep and like yeah. you're scared of him just. You know what I mean? You're just scared. Of, like, if if this shit plays in the club, yeah, yeah, bro, that's everybody going crazy, man. Imagine hearing that in Brooklyn, like, out. oh man, I I was in I was in uh in New York for like Fashion Week, and then we went to this party, and they played Pop Smoke, bro. The the whole club started like everybody, yeah, everybody. Like, I wish I could film the dance floor for you, bro. Everybody was jumping at the same tempo, like. You just see a bunch of heads elevating. <laughs> you know, it's it was crazy, bro. It was crazy, but yeah, you know, they RIP. ride hard. They ride hard for for pot smoking. Brooklyn. Yeah, man. Yeah, people man. from Brooklyn got pride. They're like, 
it's like they're not even from America. They're like, nah, I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah, like, I'm, from I'm not Bro- even. I'm not even from the U.S. I'm from Brooklyn. There's like a there's a few there's a few like cities in in the U.S. that you could actually say that you know, like I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from L.A. I'm from New York. HL. They're like different yeah, pockets like, of yeah. culture. Yeah, and these are the most like. Um, how can I not advanced, but like the most? Uh, how can I? How can I say it? The trend setting, like yeah, the most yeah, exactly. You get it. Trend setting is a good word. The most trend setting cities in in the U.S., but they're all like I won't be out here in fucking like out there saying yeah, I'm from fucking Saint Hubert. You know what I mean? Like nah, man, <laughs> nobody, really not, know. nobody knows that. <laughs> nobody knows that. Nobody. Like, oh, I'm from Canada. That's it. You know, from yeah. Canada. Canada. Yeah, that's it, man. Nah, I hear you. Even Montreal, it's like it's not even that much. It's like a good melting pot if you want to go there and like try to find ideas and you know get inspired and shit but yo bro, nobody reps montreal even from montreal bro really like k doesn't rep montreal he doesn't. like he not like that he doesn't give a fuck about him honestly wow i don't either yeah. i'm at the point where if you want to fucking rep montreal if i want to rep montreal montreal gotta follow me i'm not gonna be like oh yo like this is my city and blah nah man fuck that yeah that shit's whack it's like you're your own person yeah bro it's all about it's all about the the artist, man. It's not about the city. The city mm. ain't got ain't got shit to do with with how your music your your music comes out. Like I don't make anything that sounds like Montreal. Because Mont- I feel like Montreal doesn't have a sound for you. It to- doesn't have a sound. But there's no rappers, no English rappers that came out of Montreal, like yeah. popping. You know. That's true. Like everybody's fighting to be the first, saying Montreal this and in, in that track. Montreal, I'm from Montreal. That you know what I mean, like. Yeah. Nah, bro, that shit's whack. You just gotta <laughs> be yourself and fucking get out there and fucking get known, and then you could say, yeah, well, growing up in the cities, I'm like, you know, what I mean? just talk about it. From. Yeah, yeah. I feel like in coastal areas like LA, it's different. It's like rappers are like lifestyle rappers, so they're rapping about like the, like people like Dom Kennedy, mm. YG, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, shit, the list goes on. Like Tupac back in the day, Snoop Dogg, like they're repping yeah. their cities hard because like. They're just talking about their lifestyles, but that's like a location thing, like you said. Like Montreal, yeah. there's just like there wasn't much culture, like you said. So, our Saint, um, what was it, Saint Hubert? Yeah, Saint Hubert. Yeah, I forget about it, bro. Yeah, it's like a suburb. It's mm-hmm. it's a suburb basically, but you know, I just read Montreal because it's like the closest, the closest big city around me. You know, yeah. I could I could be repping Toronto or Ottawa or whatever. Even Ottawa is not even that popping or whatever so i mean i don't know anything about ottawa yeah so, i mean that's they got a hockey lot. team or something yeah yeah they got a yeah. hockey team they got i think they got no they don't, get, they don't have anything else just a hockey team but yeah man uh not to talk shit about ottawa don't take it uh personally please uh, <laughs> you know i don't want no beef no uh, beef yeah i'm a i'm a very chill rapper you know i'm just doing my thing oh yeah but yeah uh, um something i heard about that too because you mentioned trends earlier like all these places are trendsetters i heard that yeah. like trends start from the coasts and make their way in inward towards like mid mid country like states kind of and i thought about it like earlier i was like that's kind of true you know like trends start in new york trends start in like california or kind of coastal areas whether it's like dances or music Mm -hmm. and they kind of make their way into like the inner parts of the country i get what you're saying i get what you're saying but I don't think it's because of the co- like the location or whatever. I think really? it's because of the the people there. Yeah, in that like, location. It's more about like immigrants and mm-hmm. and like you know elements of different places that make trends start. That you makes know sense. What I mean? Yeah, because so many people from different cultures are moving to these places that they bring their yeah yeah exactly culture with them i don't think i would see anybody from like africa to you know just fly out of africa and go to fucking wyoming or some shit yeah. you know it's like they're gonna go to la new york brooklyn whatever just to try to even like pop smoke is panamanian yeah like favio foreignization i freaking you know what i mean it's like mm-hmm. it's always different cultures like taking what they have from their country and then put it in, in in there like you know yeah but it, you know i think that's what it is man yeah what's crazy about pot smoke he's only 20 years old and he had that voice like i don't get it how did he yo it's something about americans man i ain't gonna lie <laughs> americans man they look older like they, i don't know what you guys eat man 
<laughs> Y'all motherfuckers look old as hell, man. Like, <laughs> fucking, uh, what's, what's this dude named Mikey Williams, the basketball player? I don't know if you heard of him. Mm-mm. It's like high school prospect to be in the NBA. The guy's like tall as hell. He looks like he's fucking 20. The guy's probably like fucking 15 or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, man. Look at Zion Williams. He, Yo, Zion looks like linebacker. he's fucking 30, man. <laughs> Looks like he's 30, he's fucking 21 or some shit like that. I don't know. Yeah, that is God, true. I don't, like, know. I don't know what you guys eat, man. Like, you, you guys are tall. Everybody's tall. Everybody's, like, swole. Everybody's, I don't know, man. Well, I think we eat too much. That might be what it is. Like, the no, reason why it works much. for them is because they're athletes. They've turned into something, but... It's the GMOs, bro. The GMOs? The GMOs. We're moving away from it, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see. Everybody's going to get short. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Fuck it with you. Everybody gonna get short. Everybody gonna get short. The kids are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's coming, bro. It's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> nah, I noticed it already, bro. Like, people are starting to get smaller and smaller. Yeah, man. Yeah, on, that, on that Kevin Hart, you know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Talking shit. That's funny. Uh, But yeah, it seems like you, you got like a really diverse taste in music from all the people that you mentioned earlier, just about your influences. Yeah. I got a, like, on the plane to, to LA. I was listening to King Cruel the whole time. You heard of King Cruel? No. It's like basically a rock. Like, man, you're putting me on right now. You yeah, no, King Cruel is the shit, man. bro. King Cruel is the shit. Tame Impala type shit. Love Tame know? Impala. I'm seeing them on Wednesday actually over at the Forum. They're performing. Hey, good to know. Good, good, good to, to know. know. Yeah, you want to pull up, bro? I might, I might go. <laughs> I might go. You might have to. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, I I listen to a bunch of shit, man, a bunch of shit. Like I could, I could listen to some gangster shit. I could listen, listen to some trap shit. I could listen to some, you know, Griselda. You heard of Griselda? Griselda. Griselda, the um, like Benny the Butcher. I know Benny West the Butcher. Westside West Gun and um, mm-hmm. I forgot the other name, the other guy. But um, it's like a trio, a rap trio. Okay. Yeah, man, they're dope. I, I, yo, I could listen to a bunch of shit, man. Anything, anything that sounds good and you could feel the effort, I'm with it. Cause you can respect that when you listen to it, huh? Versus like the naked eye of a yeah. listener who doesn't understand what that yeah what that sound is. It's like I I used to, and it's it's crazy because not everybody hears the the difference, you know. Like some people hear that, like the 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 effort that they put in the track, you know. For example, um, what's mainstream is usually like trash because it's like. It's like fast food, you know? Like, Simple. Yeah, no, no, it's like quick, you know? You're like, okay, well, we did this in one night in the studio, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't spend time to, like, try to perfect it. Like, they'll take something that was hot back in the day. Like, now that's the trend. Sam- sample it. They take, yeah. they take like, a 90s hot track and then fucking sample that shit. And then, all right, let's put Katy Perry on that. Let's put fucking... J Balvin and bada bing bada boom. You know what I'm saying? We got a formula. Yeah, straight up, and that's what it is. Is that's really what it is, and you know, it's whatever. But the the music that it's from the underground, and you you could tell somebody put their effort, all their effort in it, and you know, like just put a bunch of like energy and like it sounds like refined and all that. That's what you want to hear. You want you want to hear no trash music. You want to hear some some good shit. You You could appreciate that. Yeah. 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 No, I think that, I think that's true in like any creative art, because like a photographer is gonna look at pictures different than the average yeah, person. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Like the photographer is gonna see things that the average person is not gonna see. Like I remember dating this girl back in the day, and I was listening to music with her, and I was like, "Don't you hear the the like the small like horns in the back?" And she's like, "What are you talking about? Like, take a deeper like, just close your eyes and like listen, focus." And then she focus. hears and she's like, "Oh my god!" Like. Wow, you just opened my eyes to like a whole new part of music. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I like to like. I that's what I like the small details that you you could hear in a track that nobody really hears, like the commoner won't hear. But mm-hmm. you know. And then as soon as you develop that type of hearing too, it's like you can never listen to music the same. Exactly. Oh, I saw I I produced a little bit um back in college or at least I got to I got into it, mm. um and then that's when I started realizing too. I'm like. Yo, like I can hear like yeah. the, the creation process behind what he's doing, like because like when you start producing, you make your you make your music and you're like, why doesn't it sound full? Mm-hmm. But then you realize that you need to add a couple like like a, a a small like change in the bass line or a small like percussion, you know, type shit like that. Yeah, 
and that's what that's what makes it beautiful because like when you're when you're like you don't really know how to process and like the effort that goes into making music you don't really you don't really understand anything you're just like oh well you know it's probably easy and then you try it out and then you realize that the the music is actually super complex and super like complicated even like a, a beat like um well the, yeah no i wasn't gonna give a right example but um like let's say jay-z's 444 right mm-hmm. the whole album if you listen to the instrumentals that he uses they might sound like very simple and they might sound like whatever but the samples the way they were chopped and the way they were like placed on the track is like impeccable you know what i mean yeah. that's what makes the album so good yeah you can never knock the on beats that. and obviously jay jay doing his thing but the beats that he used sick you know what i mean mm-hmm. anyways i think i'm just like talking right now I feel no like no I'm talking. <laughs> no I'm, I'm, i think people that are listening to especially fans you can like appreciate your input on things like this you know yeah. uh so yeah i think that one of the biggest like factors of you like being talented is the fact that you can see shit like that do you when you being, being that you're into producing now yeah uh do you have a vision of like yo i want this track to sound like this or do you kind of just start and like kind of freestyle and f- just let it flow into like becoming something that i think i think now basically what i do is basic um yeah now what i do i just listen to the to the beat at first and i open my phone and then i just anything that comes in in mind i just you know say what i want to say and then from that i listen to whatever i want to say and i craft something around it okay because the first idea that you have off of a beat is always the best idea always so i'm just like that's how i work now because that's like, instinct then yeah 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 okay. straight up instinct like oh man this would be good if i added this but when you think about it you're like uh nah you know what i mean yeah. it's not the best but when you don't think about anything and you're just like okay like let me listen to this and like let me see what i could add to this song and make to make it better that's how you get good shit you know okay that makes sense that's the process every day i light up a joint smoke a little some you know get the creative juices it has to be sativa it has to be what what if it's indica well if it's indica i I fall asleep or some shit i just like fucking yo yo, last time i went to the studio that was like two weeks ago i went to well an actual studio because i have a home studio and anyways so i went to the to the actual studio and then i smoked weed right before recording and that was the worst decision I made in my life. My my mouth was pasty. Oh, all fucking cotton mouth. Yeah, man, cotton mouth. Fucking. I was hungry. I couldn't think about anything else except like drinking water and eating. Like, oh. everything sounded bad. Like every single thing sounded bad. Like even like K's beats didn't sound like the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, just shit that normally. It's just you like can. yeah, man. It's just like yo, bro. Like I just want to sleep. I just want to fucking relax, watch a movie or whatever. You know, I just get when I when I smoke indica, I just really get interested by the by like the visuals instead of okay. like the actual music. You know, mm. like what's happening and like I just look around and you know I zone out a lot. But um, but what is sativa? If it's, if it's sativa, sativa brings fucking I don't know, man. The senses it's out. like yeah, man. It's it's like confidence. You know what I mean? It brings confidence in the sense of don't be shy to try some new shit. You know. That's the type of confidence it gives you. Like, oh, well, if it doesn't sound good, it doesn't sound good. So what? You know, let's try it out. Mm-hmm. And then you try it out and it sounds great. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's the type of shit that I like. Like sativa, just like fucking get in the zone. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel that. Have you tried out? Have you heard of that cafe that's over in uh, that's over here in L.A.? I didn't try it. It's called, uh, have you heard about it? Nah. And I don't think I would try it because I'm not a day smoker. If right. I smoke during the day, I'm like fucked. But it's a it's a night thing too. So oh, it's, it's the very night. first yeah. cannabis cafe in right. America ever. Nice. So it's crazy. Like they bring shit to you, like it's Amsterdam or something. Yeah, like you know, people yeah. go to like cafes like that. Yeah, I've been once in a cafe in Amsterdam, but I I didn't used to smoke back then. Mm-hmm. I went with Kay, and then it was like a cat laying around. A just cat. Like, yeah, a cat laying around, just fucking chilling. <laughs> Kay ordered some weed and. Like they had the menu of effects that it gives you and shit, and the kid was like, "Oh yeah, I kind of like this, kind of like that." <laughs> and uh, he got some some shit, and I was just like chilling with him, you know, yeah, secondhand high, secondhand high, yeah, H O C, yep, that's funny. Yeah. 
yeah that's cool to hear you how your creation process is like that um i feel like everybody's creation process is a little bit different mm-hmm. so that's really interesting um so what's next for you when's the album expected to come out what uh what can we expect from you in the near future probably summer the album is called black vogue funk black and, vogue uh, funk yeah bvf we're basically making a movie from that and um yeah man summer sometime in summer probably like july or august or some shit like that maybe even like autumn i don't know like fall or some shit so okay. um yeah that's pretty much it man like uh new singles dropping really soon really 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 soon you uh, said there's like a big feature that's coming soon right well big big collab big well, collab yeah yeah not okay. a feature necessarily but you know i rapped on somebody somebody's beats and it was quite a quite a treat quite a treat for the, for the beat heads you know for sure so yeah man that's about it man just i'm just working bro just working, just working. i'm going on tour in uh, april in europe Hopefully that unlocks a lot of doors, but coronavirus might fuck up everything. Right. So uh, <laughs> fuck. there's nothing certain right now. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's messed up. It's messed up. But um, people saying they might cancel Coachella. I hope not, bro. Yeah, I really hope not, because it's like it's not that serious, bro. Yeah, it's really not that serious. It's not. But people, people are like crazy about their safety. So I don't. I I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. I hope it doesn't. But you know what's crazy, man? What? They want to ban Coachella because of coronavirus, but they don't buy no guns in the States, bro. Yo, you know what I mean? Nobody thinks about that. That shit that? kills more people than coronavirus, How man. crazy is that? Dude? Come on, dog. I don't know, man. You're, yo, America's fucked up, that. bro. I ain't gonna lie. America's fucked up, man. I love America, but y'all fucked up, man. That's a, that's a tweet right there. <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all want to you cancel? You could, you, could, you could take it, man. I don't, I'm not even on Twitter like that. <laughs> yo, I'm telling you, bro. You want to con- cancel like Coachella? You want to cancel all these shits? Like all these great American festivals and all that, just because of a virus, but you don't want to cancel no fucking guns. Yeah, I don't know, man. What's what's Canada's gun law? You don't. Have, you're not allowed to have anything. Really? Yeah, no. You can't even walk with a. Like, if you want to transport a gun, you have to have a like a paper. You have to have like there's a bunch of shit. You, like even if you want to hunt, you know what I mean? Wow. It's like it's way like restricted, like super restricted super restricted so what happens if you get caught with a gun is it like you're getting some serious time well probably like two or three years but you know if you get caught with a gun yeah yeah like two or three years something like that but you don't want to do that man yeah yeah you know what i'm saying you don't want to do that look at you guys are fine like yeah everybody's like like things i don't think there's any like well canada's canada's big right so Toronto's really messed up when it comes to like guns and shit because a bunch of killings like Smoke Dog died last year Smoke Dog is a rapper from Toronto he was like kind of popular mm-hmm. Smoke Dog um, a, a bunch of people died just because of you know guns and shit but yeah we're still better than the US bro I ain't gonna lie yeah gonna lie. The, the gun laws are all my, all are my patriotic uh, US people <laughs> probably gonna hate me right now but no yeah. I think I think there's actually the opposite man people like, notice it as a big issue too I'm not crazy into politics mm. I should I, I actually want to get into it a lot more so I could do my research on a should get a politician to to come to, on right yeah, yeah, yeah. hey come yeah. up with ideas you know right now saying? yeah Good I, idea. yeah no I, I I think that's important because a lot of people Especially, we have so much power, you know, like yeah. for voting, and a lot of us yeah, are yeah, ill informed yeah. on things. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You just gotta know your your fucking politics, man. Even me, I don't know shit about politics to be honest. Mm-hmm. I just know that I felt <clears throat> I felt like Trump uh, was gonna lose this. Uh, I thought I thought Kanye was gonna run for president <laughs> at some point. <laughs> that, was a, <laughs> that was a that was a, a good boost. joke. That was a boost. That was a good joke. <laughs> good it was. Joke. But yeah, so besides the music coming up um, next for you, is there anything else that you want to focus on, like in the n- in the near to late future, on yourself? Nah, bro. Just music. Just want to get just want to get fit and uh, yeah, just want to get fit and fucking music, bro. That's all I want to do. Hell yeah, I respect yeah. it. Where yeah. where can people find you on social or if they want to like listen to more music? Where can people find you? Um, you could find me on Instagram. Loopies, L O U P E E Z. You can find me on um, Twitter, L O U underscore Phelps, P H E L P S. Um, that's pretty much the only thing I, I use, like Twitter and. I'm not even on Twitter like that, but Twitter 
Instagram, Apple TV. Uh, my bad. Apple Music. Okay. Yeah, Apple Music. <laughs> you catch me acting. In Yo, the I, was like, <laughs> I didn't even know about that. We gotta tap into <laughs> acting. Um. Yeah. Apple Music, Spotify, title, whatever. For Just sure. All streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check your boy out, man. For sure. Hell yeah. Awesome. Any uh, any last words before before we cut this? No last words, man. No last words. <laughs> it's working on some new shit, man. Holla at your boy. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I'm in LA. I was deaf, yeah. Come cook up. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. All right. Well, we we appreciate you coming on. And yeah, everybody check out his music. I'm going to leave a few links in the description for that. Lou, I appreciate it. Bless. Awesome. Bless That's a wrap. Yes.